a T-Rex traffic generator that started uh, incubated in Cisco system, and we are using it internally, and maybe it will be useful for you. So let's start. I will start with T-Rex overview, and then I will get into the mods more deeply. So T-Rex overview, the problem that we had at start, why we started it, is a carrier grade or commercial traffic generator are super expensive, not scalable, and the main objective from our side, it wasn't flexible, we couldn't change it. And the implication is quality, the quality of our product. And it means that we are limited late and late tasting, different benchmark and bottlenecks. We cannot find the real bottlenecks of our product. So how did we solve it? T-Rex is a Linux user space application. It uses a DPDK library. And by that, we can reach very high rate because it has burst the packet in receive and transmit. It uses standard hardware, off-the-shelf hardware and uh, NICs, and we can get very high performance, like 200 gig for rea realistic traffic, or 100 or 200 megapacket per second for uh, stateless, I will talk about that. It's flexible and it's open source, you can change it to your own need if, if it's, it's required, and support virtualization, it can work on Azure, on the new model, and AWS, and there is very easy installation. So what is the main operational mode of T-Rex? There is the stateless, it's more for layer two and layer three, for switches and router, and stateful, which is more for stateful and complex feature like DPI, NAT, and firewall that has a state for the packet. And we have another two entity, uh, which is a services that works alongside to the traffic which is BIRD that we integrated. BIRD is an open source daemon for routing protocol and can generate very high scale and event driven of BGP, OSPF, and ISIS. And EMU is something that we integrated for simulating clients in high scale. For example, if you want one million clients that do dot one X and authenticate to the network and do a DHCP and IPv6 and IPv4, this is the way to go. Other solution didn't work for us. Okay, and it works alongside the traffic. So you can start with millions route of BGP and then start the traffic itself, stateless or stateful. This is slide shows the, the main uh, modes in, in different way. Is there is stateful, ASTF, and stateless. Stateless, again, is for sm small switches or routers layer two and layer three, and advanced state four is for smart feature to test. The high-level architecture is split to server and client. The server side is getting a JSON RPC over zero MQ as a response, a request response, and it send, and there is an event bus for messages to the cores, and core talk to the DPDK and send the traffic. And there is a compiler there, and uh, I will show more about that. The, the left side is the control plane. It's written, it's a Python wrapper on top of the JSON RPC, and you can control, automate a scenario of traffic, for example, load the profile, start the traffic, get statistics, etc., using an API. Everything is built on, on top of this API. And we have another two um, utility, it's called Tire Console, that we are as a developer using to run the, the the scenarios and there is another GUI that is built uh, with a different group and is not maintained by us. Another way to look at it is this slide. In this slide, you can see that the main T-Rex we call this project in in Git T-Rex Core. Uh, this represent the the the, the, the micro thread. There is a control plane, there is a data plane per each uh, uh, queue in the DPDK, and there is a RX thread for uh, measuring latency and resolution of one microsecond. It's free, this core is free, and there is a message bus. Everything is event driven and zero sharing, there is no locks at all. This is the Python that I talked in the last slide. We can automate operation through the API here to the server. And it can be multi-user, and EMU and BIRD is located here. BIRD is working on top of a Linux namespace and can generate a high rate of BGP, OSPF, and RIP through VET. So we have a switch of VET. We can have 
many number of uh, Linux namespace. And EMU works in a different way. There is a tunnel with 0MQ of the packet, and it simulates its internal stack that simulates all the client control plane uh, protocol at high rate. For example, dot one x and authenticate uh, the client itself. Okay, let's start with stateless mode. Stateless mode is based on a profile uh, based on stream, stream based on packet. It's a packet base. And you can create many streams. I will show what is what does it mean stream. The scale is between 10 to 30 mega packet per second per, for one core. So you can easily get to 100 or 200, it depends on your PCI bandwidth, to a very high rate, something that can can test a high-end high uh, router. Uh, it has an interactive GUI and TUI, and it can gather statistics per port or per stream, latency, jitter, automation, I already talked about. It can be multi-user. Number of users can be connected to the same server and acquire a specific port. And of course, debug capability, like capture the traffic, analyze the traffic, uh, run some uh, capability on, on top of Python, like, for example, a DHCP to debug a DHCP. So you can get, do everything in, in Python. Let's talk about how the traffic is composed. We call it the profile. The profile is defining the traffic that you will send. And in this example, this simple example, like hello world, is we are defining three streams, stream one, stream two, and stream three. Stream one is continuous packet. It's just the same packet again and again, like in this example, it's a, IP, a TCP packet. The rate is one kilo packet per second. You can set the rate. And stream number two is a burst. It's three packet, and there is an inter-packet gap, inter-stream gap. It starts only after ISG. And the nice thing about that, that stream number two can trigger that stream number three. Stream number three will not start at, um, at startup of the profile, and stream number two will, will trigger it. So you can, we can see here, first we have a template packet that we can send, then the mode. It's either continuous burst or multi-burst. And there is the capability to associate pro, a stream to, it, to other stream. And profile, it's, it's like a program of the traffic. What do we want to send? Let's see how you define it in Python, because you need to define it. And this example, this is really simple example of a profile. It has one stream, which is Ethernet over IP, over UDP, over 10 access, which is the payload. And then I define a stream with this packet. And the mode of operation is continuous. Okay, and the source and destination uh, could be 16.001 to 48.001. Let's see another example, more complex example. In this case, there are two streams, one burst that start uh, after ISG time, in dot five second, and then it trigger multi-burst stream, which is the stream one. Let's see how it's defined that. Here we are defining an object of profile, list of stream, two stream, and then here we need to define name for stream because there is association between stream. So this is stream zero, and this is stream one. Okay, and next to stream zero is stream one. So we will trigger that, and auto self is false. So this will trigger it a burst of 10 packets, and then it will trigger multi burst of uh, four packets multiplied by five. Okay, this is another example. Let's talk about field engine. Field engine is the capability to change. You now, sending the same packet again and again, it's not that uh, nice. We need something more. So field engine is the way to change field inside the packet. For example, if I want to change a toast in the same stream, if I want to send to change the range of the client or range of the server, if I want to change the, the packet size randomly, this is the example. So we built a program we built an interpreter that you can build program that associate with the stream that will change fields inside the packet. In this example, we create a fin attack that attack this server, 48001. So we build a base packet of TCP fin, we reflect fin, and then we build this program. Let's see this program. First, we define variable IP source with a range 
of IDs from 16.001 to 80.001.55. And then we define another variable for source port with random source port. And then we write, so every packet that we generate, we will choose source IP and source port. We will write it to IP source offset. We will fix the checksum. We will fix the TCP checksum. And we write the TCP uh, the source port. So this will generate traffic from one stream to attack many number of clients attacking one server in very high rate. I will show the rate. Let's talk about automation, the Python automation. Let's see an example. How do we do that? In this example, we are taking an object of a client, specify the, the IP and the verbose log. We are connecting to the server. We are acquiring a port, in this example, a zero and one. Then we can add stream or add profile. We can clear the statistic of the port and the stream. By the way, we can associate statistic per stream and latency and jitter per stream. We adding some metadata into the stream. And then we can start the traffic. Once we loaded the profile, we can start the profile. We can add multiple profile and we can multiply the rate. The rate in the profile is, uh, is not, it's not uh, absolute. So we can take the rate higher and lower, and then wait for the traffic, get warning if there is in the server warning, and disconnect. This is a really simple example. Let's see the performance. This is mega packet per second per one core. You can see that it depends on the mode. It's between 10 to 25, and the size of the packet is less of a factor. So this is, if you want performance and your feature is not that, complicated, this is the way to go. Let's talk about stateful. Stateful is more for features that are complex, like load balancer, DPI, a firewall, and NAT. In those cases, the features are super complex, and they have a context. They have a context for a flow, context for the client, context for the server, caching of many things. Uh, some packet need the packet inspection, for example, the certificate. We need to analyze the certificate and look if the certificate is valid or not. So some packets are a huge amount of processing and some packets we know everything on, on, on this flow. So for understanding the bottleneck of those features, there is a need for realistic traffic generation. And this is the solution that we found. The profile is defined differently. It's defined with context of pool of clients, pool of application like HTTP, and pools of server. So you can associate pools of application for specific pools of clients, for example, engineering that uses specific application like VNC or, or a browsing, specific browsing or Citrix. And, and by that, we can create more realistic uh, traffic to exercise the device and understand where is the bottleneck. In, in this mode, by the way, we can run in two di in separate instances. For example, in the cloud, if there is a compression between the client and the server, as long as the layer 7 is the same, TRX will work. One will be the client, one will be the server, and the state machine on top of the TCP will work. How, how this mode is, is built? So first we took a BSD TCP stack, which is a kernel base, and took it to user space. And separate, everything is, again, separated, it's event-driven, and everything is per core. So the stack is per core, per context. There is no sharing of information. Even the counters are per core, and all the context is per core, and we split the work between the cores. And, and by batching the packet in DPDK and batching the packet in the TCP stack, we can achieve very high scale uh, in memory and in performance. And this is the reason we can, can scale with the number of applications. And we can, of course, measure latency and jitter, and let's talk about the emulation layer, how we emulate application. It's not real application, it's emulation of application. This is an example of, of a profile uh, with let's say number of clients, number of server, and this is the application. We can take pickup files that represent an application like browsing, video, RTP, uh, or HTTP, or mail, and amplify it for 100 gig and exercise the device under test. This is an example of a profile. 
it's written in Python, but it's different from STL. Here we are defining an STF profile, and we can give list of pickup files that represent application. Each application we learn, we analyze the application, we analyze the request response, and we build some instruction that say how to run this application on top of a TCP stack. And of course, we can associate a template to pools of client. In this, in this uh, example, there is default pool, so all the template will be associated with the different client pool and server pool. Let's see how the emulation layer works. In the emulation layer works, there is a mini instruction, and we, in this case, this is simple HTTP request and response, so we are building a request, so we are sending this to the socket, the request, and wait for the response of the server. The server uh, has the opposite instruction. It, it's wait for the request, and then answer with response. The pseudo code, Beneath the, the emulation layer, it's like a socket, like you are allocating a socket, connect to the server, write the request, and read the response. The nice thing about T-Rex is that it's event-driven. We are doing it for you. You just need to provide a pickup file, and we analyze it, and we will run the state machine and build it. But you can still change the state machine. Now, let's talk about why it's scalable, why I cannot take Linux and, and run it. Let's take an example. Let's say I want 10 million flows that attack the device under test with specific HTTP. In case of uh, a normal TCP stack, you have a, a queue of packets, a sliding window of TX packet. Let's say it's 32K, which is very minimal today because of the RTT. With 10 million flow, you, you need, for the worst case, about 400 gigabytes of traffic only for the transmit queue. In our case, we change the implementation because we know ahead of time what is the template data. We just create a virtual queue that say in which point we are located and when we need to send the packet, we go back to the constant memory and build everything. It's a lazy allocation. Instead of pushing the data, we are asking the data from the layer of emulation. And this way we are saving a lot of memory and can get to the scale of, of, of uh, performance of throughput and of scale and memory, of memory scale. Okay, let's talk about bird integration. I talked about bird integration and EMU integration and why do we need that. Bird integration is for routing protocol. Some use case of routing protocol is, let's say I want to push one million routes to the switch and then send specific traffic that match those uh, 10 million routes. To push 10 million routes to a switch or router, I, I cannot do it through CLI, it's very, very slow. So the way to do it is using some uh, daemon that implement the BGP and OSPF and, and RIP. And we found that the daemon, bird daemon is fast enough, so we run it on the Linux namespace and open VET and created a way that we can talk to a processes um, that attach to a Linux namespace and create an API, the same Python API that we have through T-Rex and simplify things that you can push one million route and in a few seconds you can push all the route and then run the stateless or stateful traffic scenario that match those routes. So this is the BERT integration. BERT is an open source. We didn't invent it. We just integrated it into T-Rex. Okay, let's talk about EMU service that you can run in parallel like the BERT. EMU services, why did, what, the question is why? why, why what is the requirement? Why, what we tried to solve? So first, the requirement was that we need to uh, emulate clients on the same network, let's say 64K clients. So we need to implement ARP and IPv6 ND RFC to create a neighbor solicitation and all this RFC and protocol. And then they came with IGMP and MLD. I want multicast to membership of multicast addresses. In case of multicast addresses, it become more complex because if you want to do it with Linux namespace, you need to open a socket in a process 
and become complex. And then they come with DHCP requirement, DHCPv6, DHCPv4. And then we need to authenticate this client through the network because without authenticating it, we cannot send traffic. So this is the, we needed to solve this requirement in a holistic way that could be scalable and, and would be simple to uh, implement. This is the requirement from RFC perspective. This is the start of the requirement. So we needed RFC, ICMP, IGMP, MLD, IPv6, DHCP, .1X, uh, TLS on top of TCP and UDP. It's a full stack. It's a full stack in user space and it should be lightweight and support all the protocol, the control plane of the client. The implementation, what we came, the solution that we came to is EMU. It's a process in Go, event-driven, that it's written it's like a plugin, and there is a tunnel of packets. So it can generate packets and send it through this tunnel, and the RX core will send it to the port, and back there is filter to the RX and back to the EMU. And it's really easy to implement those protocols as a plugin because it's not dependable, it's very fast to develop and so forth. The design pattern, uh, it's pluggable with event bus. Every plugin can attach to specific context, client context or namespace context. I will talk about what is namespace context and what is thread context. And and by that, it can implement the state machine of the RFC. And if there is a need to send an event to another plugin that there is no need to know about, you can send an event, you can fire an event, and the other, other plugin can register to this event. For example, if there is a change in IP of the client, the ARP can trigger again, and DHCP can trigger this event. The same for .1x and, and so forth. So the H plugin can register callbacks of RFC, counters, time, it can use timer, it can use a simulator framework and uh, logging capability and so forth. Um, just to talk about namespace, why, what is namespace? In case of namespace is our way because everything is implemented in one, all the clients are implemented on the same context of thread, we, in case of broadcast and multicast, we didn't want that the packet will be duplicated to all the client. We wanted shared memory. So for example, in ARP, we have one table that shares for all the names, for all the clients on the same namespace. In case there is a broadcast packet, it's update the table in one namespace, and then all the client get the response. There is no need for duplication of packets, and by that we can get scale. Example of a profile. Okay, this is a profile of EMU. It's different than stateful and stateless. And you can see that we can define a client object. In this case, the MAC is the key. We cannot have two entities with the same MAC. We can associate it with namespace, dot one x or virtual interface, or physical interface. And then we can add plugin. Every plugin is generic, and we can add all the information of this plugin, like ARP, ICMP, dot one x uh, DHCP, IPv6, and so forth. Okay, I think I gave you just a hint of uh, the capability. So let me just uh, summarize. TUX is stateful and stateless. Everything works on, on top of an API, and it has two services, EMU for client emulation, and BIRD, an open source BIRD for routing protocol emulation. That's it. Okay. Um, thank you, Avana. So uh, we have a lot of questions, um, but before we dive into them, I'd like to ask kind of a, a higher level, level question. What is the what is the nature of this project? Is this intended to be an open source uh, project? Have you open sourced the code or, or is there an intent to build a community around it? Uh, I don't know how to answer it, but it's open source and everyone is welcome to uh, use it and, and share the knowledge of the Linux uh, community. But uh, our, our need was to use 
We use it for internal testing of uh, Cisco gear, and we open source it because you cannot do internal testing without sharing how you test, right? You need, you need everyone to test in the same way. So user could... Have you seen much traction yeah. outside of, of Cisco to use this? Yeah, I'm using it internally. And I know that more companies are using it internally. And it's user space, so it's not, sorry, it's not a Linux kernel. But, but you can use it to test Linux kernel uh, models. Okay, uh, so there were some uh, questions about uh, features. Um, one I'd like to cover. So is there anything that prohibits this from being ported to AFXDP? No, as I said in the um, comments, every PMD could be converted and use the basic features. But there are advanced features in traffic generator, for example, hardware counters in, uh, in hardware or uh, scale of advanced state field, how to split the traffic to course. We are using RSS with specific key. So if the driver does not have this capability, you won't be able to scale to a number of cores, for example. So there, are, there, there is an internal driver that uses standard PMD driver. And in this driver, you are specifying what the driver can, is capable of. You're asking it and, and do some, some um, shim API to accommodate that and expose more feature of the driver, if there is, if you can. So the short answer, every PMD can be used, but maybe not with all the feature, with all the feature. Okay, so does FREX support HTTP2 quick for layer seven testing? Yeah, so what is the question? Again, can you repeat the question? That does T-Rex support HTTP2 and quick for uh, layer no. seven testing? No. Well, for advanced, let me maybe, um, let me say a, a bit about that. For ASTF, we have a TCP and UDP stack. And on top of that, we have, we are replay, replay the protocol on top of TCP or UDP. So for example, you can take a TLS, pick a file and replay the layer seven. So if the device under test doesn't do a TLS proxy, it will work. If you do a DPI or if you do a NAT, or if you do, because you have the two sides, it will work. But if you want to do a test for TLS proxies, that for my understanding, it's, it's become impossible, you know, in TLS, and, and so forth. Uh, and because of that, we didn't invest in that. Um, you, you won't be able to do it in ASTF. But with EMU, we have a user space stack that can do for scale with clients. It's similar to the last um, meeting, uh, you know, the kernel uh, timestamp, time um, future timestamp. But it's much more scalable because it's written from scratch and it's lightweight, and you can scale millions of clients with one space, millions of VM with very lightweight uh, memory footprint of memory and, and CPU. Okay, there were several questions about the cache. Um, I don't quite understand uh, the question. Maybe or someone. Yeah, so, can... Okay, so for field engine. You know, field engine is working per packet. So you can run the field engine every packet. I and mean, if you have infinite permutation, it will do that. But there is a, a cache mode. Cache mode means that you run the field engine offline, save the packet, save all the permutation, and then repeat them, replay the packet. So you have only limited permutation as your memory. For example, you can replay a field engine of 20K packets and then replay. Now replay the packet is very cheap because you have all the MBUF at hand, right? So it's faster, much faster than the field engine that you need to allocate memory, copy the packets, 
change the field, etc. This is a, this is the, the, the difference between cash and non cash. But in cash, you don't have all the limit, all the capability of all the possibility of the packets. For example, if you have unlimited number of possibility, it won't work with cash. <clears throat> Okay, uh, and then there was questions about simulating jitter. And I guess we can kind of generalize that, simulate various traffic conditions, latency, uh, what have you. Yes, um, we, can, we, can, we can do that. We can measure latency in parallel with the RX score that is free. And because of that, and we are using very high speed um, QoS in the egress. So the resolution of the latency packet is really good. And in parallel, you can tweak we have a, a, a language to specify how the, the traffic is, is working. So you can generate, you can simulate jitter and uh, between request and response. Uh, somebody's not muted. Uh, what is the actual packets per second when using the field engine? I have not seen 300 megabits per second or 300 million packets per second. I was wondering yeah. about the for, slide had the cash uh, on I showed for uh, in the example, it's depend on the other, right? So for Cisco UCS with Intel XL 710, I think we reached about 10 mega packet per second for one core. So you can easily fill up the the bandwidth of uh, 10x i think in one ucs okay so uh let's go ahead and move on um thank you that's uh, very interesting uh, i do think it would be nice to make sure that we hit the the links to that open source um, I think there's going to be a lot of interest in this and might even be some interest in uh, perhaps developing against it, which would be uh, obviously really nice. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone.